get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the sand And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Atari, many more, how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, today, our sponsor is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, and eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co-founder John Corcoran. It's application only. Today, I'm very excited. We have Jake Atwood, founder of BuzzBuilder. BuzzBuilder is a software that allows sales professionals to automate their cold email outreach. His singular focus is to make it easy for salespeople to pack their pipeline with qualified leads. Who doesn't want that? He shows a warmer approach for prospecting the busy executives besides the dreaded cold calling methods. Uh, and buzzbuilderpro.com has tools and programs have been implemented by over 25,000 sales professionals. I think Jake has probably trained more than that with his books and his resources. And I also want to thank John Corcoran for introducing us. So Jake, thanks for uh, joining me. Jeremy, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. So I always ask Jake, um, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask what's been the lowest point for you and how you push through and then yeah. On the flip side, what's been one of the proudest moments? What's lowest, been the lowest point? This is probably about about four years ago. So I was about uh, two years into Buzz Builder, and it was making some small progress, tick, tick, tick. But it was like you know, one step up, two steps back. It always felt like, and I was just discouraged by you know. Of course, you have these big dreams, like okay, first six months I'm going to open up you know ten thousand users, and you know it's going to be a billion dollar company in ten years. <laughs> of course, you're always a bit unrealistic there. So I sent some benchmarks, but you know the product was having a tough time because of development issues, and it was just you know it was just not making it happen, and. I knew I could go to work for another company if I wanted to and be a VP of sales or even take over as an interim CEO and make a lot more money. And I'm like, this is the debate, of course, right? Do I live the dream or, or go for the payday? Yeah. Of course, you know, my wife and I had a lot of heart to heart conversations like, you know, and the business is taking so much time. Um, you know, I got a family to support here. I got a, a nice mortgage going on. And so I, I basically made the decision, all right, I'm going to give this six months. Mm. And either it's going to take off to the moon in six months and I'm all in. It's a short window. I'm done. It's a short window. Yeah. But I, I needed to give myself some urgency, I thought, you know? Yeah. That's tough and when you run a business because who's holding you accountable is the owner. Yeah. So yeah. I thought, you know, what's gonna hold me accountable is I, I tell my friends, I tell my family, I gotta bring this to this level in six months. And now they're watching. And now I it kind of plants a seed in the back of your head too, doesn't it? And uh, we got there in four months. You know, wow. we got your goals and um, you know things. Was your like, goal like a user goal, or was it revenue goal, or what? what it was were you? mainly based on revenue from from account acquisition. So you know, I went out and I just pounded the pavement and I did some lead gen tactics to bring on business. And you know, we got lucky a couple of times. But of course, I find the harder I work, the luckier I seem to get. Right. And so it works out that way. You know, yeah. It works out that way. And you know, so you know, and what inspired me is right. About a month into that, I'm just going, you know, is it even worth six months? And I go to this event in town here, and there's a cooperative uh, office complex in town here called Coco. They've got a few locations, and they, they had an event, they had a startup event for startup software companies. They brought on some really talented, really successful entrepreneurs that had already grown their businesses to 10, 20, 100 million dollars. Yeah. And they all told their story about how they started out. And there's a guy in town here that said, you know, I was living on my buddy's couch for six months by night and then coding by day and it seemed like the product would never go anywhere and now he's at 30 million dollars in revenue the guy's got like a five million dollar house out of minnetonka wow. and they all seem to have the same uh common denominator is nobody ever got there the easy way yeah because i guess if it's easy everybody would do it and did he share how he got from the couch to 30 million or <laughs> You know, just never give up, man. Yeah. And it was, it was let's just keep focused on the vision. Yeah. I, I, and it and it and it works. You know, and you can't take your eye off the ball. You got to just keep believing. So a month in, when you heard that, 
yeah. Jake, were you like, well, maybe I'll give it seven months. Were you still like, nope, six months, that's it? Out of fire. Well, because I thought because I'm having these problems that something's wrong with the business, something's wrong with me. Maybe I wasn't, didn't have what it took. Maybe the product just, you know, wasn't, wasn't uh, you know, good enough. Yeah. Uh, but there's a million other variables that come into play. I mean, we all look at the guy that goes, he is so lucky. How did he make a million dollars? Because he doesn't know what he's doing. His product's not even that great. He's just gotten lucky. But what I've learned through the years is the guy wasn't lucky. Now, he wasn't the brightest bulb on the tree, but he just didn't know how to give up. And actually, it's funny because I remember talking to a guy I met who was worth like $20 million, $30 million. I remember thinking, this guy has got to be one of the most, like, the biggest idiots I've ever met. Like, he can barely put two sentences together. He didn't even graduate high school. How is it possible he's successful? I'm like, he had to have inherited the money. The money. Maybe it's a trust fund. Maybe it's his dad's sort of the business. Turned out, his biggest blessing was the fact that he didn't know how to do much of anything at all except go out and sell and build relationships. So he was automatically forced to find the right people to do all the things that he didn't have a clue how to do. Mm. He didn't have any option. He had to find people to do that, and they could do it way better than he could. Mm. And meanwhile, here's Jake, you know, the rugged individualist. I'm doing everything because I think I can. And meanwhile, I'm the idiot, <laughs> you know? So four months in is when you hit that goal. Yeah, about four months in, we really started to hit our stride. We had our first like big breakthrough month in revenue. And back then, that was like we hit you know thirty thousand dollars in revenue. Now we're losing money at thirty thousand dollars. It could put things in perspective. But that at that point was kind of like life changing money that yeah. now I can, out and I can hire a sales rep and I can uh, I can afford to hire a, a third developer. I can afford to have some breathing room and have some cash in the bank. I'm not working on four hours of cash flow, you know. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta close the deal by the day, otherwise this thing's folding up. <laughs> so, so what about the proudest moment for you? Oh man, um, you know I I do a bad job of celebrating the wins. I'd say the proudest moment has just been yeah. when we brought on Jamie and we put a process in place that helped him be successful. And then he made a lot more money that year than he thought he'd make. And, be, and then he made in his last job. It's like, okay, we've got something here now, you know? Um, what about lately? What's been a, um, a milestone or proud moment lately for you the know, company? You know, to the standard stuff, you know, revenue, we had our biggest quarter ever a couple of quarters ago. Wow. And so that we never even expected. I mean, things just all kind of popped, which is, again, if you're managing the pipeline, it'll eventually happen. So, that was huge. Um, we finished the biggest upgrade to the software we've ever had. So about a year and a half ago, again, we're busting at the seams. I hire this consultant to come in um, along with my CTO and, and basically help us figure out, do we just try to um, patch and band-aid our existing software and keep it, you know, you know, keep bandaging it? Or do we just start from scratch? And it made more sense to start from scratch. So we started from the ground up. We rebuilt the software. And we thought it was going to take six months. <laughs> it took a year and a half. I was going to say three years. <laughs> and, and three times as much as I thought it was going to cost. Yeah. So Did you have to bring on other help outside the CTO? Or yeah. To, so he actually enlisted the help of a development firm that he manages. And he, uh, he, uh, he, he's hired some of the folks within that to build the software. But now it's taken our software to this real elite level. Yeah. Uh, and I love building things. I mean, from the time I was little, I was always the guy that was, I get a new toy and I would take it apart so I could kind of put it, put it, put it back together again. So software to me is fun because I like to build software. I like to see an idea, kind of a dream, uh, turn into something tangible you can play yeah. with. Um, so launching the new software, that day it was like, for me, Christmas, unpackaging my shiny new software app. Yeah. It was pretty fun. Jake, who do you go to for advice in mentorship now? I'm sure your uncle. Who else? uncle for sure. And, you know, that's where it's, I'd say if anybody is trying to really kind of elevate their business, business next level, find people to work, to talk to that are more successful than you are, whose businesses are better than yeah. yours are bigger. And you're going to learn a lot. You know, you'll learn from their, their mistakes and uh, successes. And, you know, they've been there and done that. Usually they can offer a fresh perspective. So, you know, there, there hasn't been other than, you know, my uncle, and then, of course, family members, any one person I would pinpoint as much as just having groups I plugged myself into. Yeah. Do you have groups um, 
that you do plug yourself into, whether it's a mastermind or you go to a conference, like an industry conference? There's been a lot. So I, what, I, yeah. I attend a lot of conferences, yeah. you know, whether it's a specific one. What do you like? Yeah. Ship. There's a there's a group that, for example, in town here, I'm the board of directors with. Um, I attended and I liked it so much, and it was founded actually by my uncle. It's called Professional Sales Association. Mm-hmm. It's got um, some big hitters in there, some entrepreneurs that are really successful, some CEOs, as well as a lot of um, you know entry level salespeople looking to learn the art of, of sales. And it's just a great place to go and uh, and bring some ideas. There's a couple of fellow software uh, CEOs in there that I'll I'll network with. And ask how things are going, and uh, you know they've got a different perspective than I do. So, Any other industry conferences across the yeah, U.S.? Yeah, you know, um, there's actually a, a couple small business. Like I'm flying out to L.A. to go to a small business conference out there in mm-hmm. in uh, November, November 10th, and so I try to do a search for a lot of those events coming up and have a chance to just get out there and, and network with fellow CEOs. And a lot of it's being introduced by folks like yourself. Uh, you know, being introduced to fellow CEOs in the neighborhood here. Yeah. Go out and meet with. And it's great because a lot of times they'll just have a totally different skill set than I do. So I'll share some ideas for marketing that they never thought of. And they'll share some ideas for, you know, other aspects of the business that I never thought of. And, you know, you all win. I have one last question, Jake. And this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Um, everyone should first check out buzzbuilderpro.com. Any other places they should check out online or on your site? That we should point them towards. So um, the site I like it's uh, is full disclosure. My uncle started it, but it's by far the best resource for prospecting skills. If hmm. that's what you're looking for, it's yeah. called the prospectingexpert.com. dot com. Prospectingexpert dot com. There's another one if if you're more of a a marketer or you're an entrepreneur that wants to learn a lot about marketing. Then there's a really cool site I like called marketingexperiments.com, and hmm. it's all free. They basically do all these big marketing projects for like huge companies, like Wall Street Journal Online, and and these companies, and they publish 100% of the before and after picture with the project. So that's say, amazing. Okay, here is the website, and here's what they're doing to generate leads, and then we fix this, 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 and here's how it worked. And so you learn from everybody else's, uh, you know, budget basically they spent on this. Who runs that, or is it a big group? It's a big group. They are they're a company called Marketing Experiments, and then uh, you know they've got quite a staff. And then they recent a couple of years ago they acquired the largest marketing association called Marketing Sherpa. Hmm. Both groups. So and they've just got tons of like really good content on oh, there, and they awesome. run it more like a research laboratory. Right. Uh, you know, so you get all the. All the, the metrics and so There's forth. too many good resources here. So everyone should check out buzzbuilderpro.com. And so, Jake, last question is what did we – what should we talk about? What did we not cover with Buzz Builder Pro or cold outreach or whatever you think uh, we need to to finish off with? I think we ca- – I mean, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, you know. I'm not all that interesting of a guy, so I'm not, <laughs> you know, my biggest accomplishment in the personal life is I'm like a champion ping, ping pong player. <laughs> well, well, next time we see each other, I'm going to challenge you. So There we go. Yeah, I, I got two kids that keep me plenty busy. We're having a good time there, you know. Well, thank you. And um, any maybe um, type of companies, if people know of these type of companies, they should check out uh, Buzz Builder if they're this listening. Type of companies that would be a good candidate for yeah. Buzz Builder? Mm-hmm. Really, if, if your reps cold call, they need the tool. If you're seeing less business from referrals and trade shows, you need Buzz Builder. If you're trying to take a team that is, notori- that is like historically not hunted and now you want them to hunt for the first time, you need Buzz Builder. Those are our three main audiences. Right. Yeah. Jake, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Check out buzzbuilderpro.com. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. Happy hunting. What I got. Can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, looks like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling.